We really wish we knew exactly what caused food allergy. Um, there are certainly genetic factors that have been identified, such as if you have a family history of food aller of, of any allergy, your child is much more likely to have food allergy. And then um, there are certain environmental factors that have been associated with the development of food allergy, dietary factors like um, vitamin D, antioxidant exposures, but none of these really explain the dramatic rise in uh, food allergy that we've seen in the last 20 years. So it's still kind of puzzling that we're left with, you know, what exactly is driving this increase. The most common uh, top three foods that people are allergic to are milk, egg, and peanut. And these really typically affect young children uh, in the first few years of life. That's when they're diagnosed. The, the main types of food allergy that we are uh, interested in are what's called IgE-mediated food allergies. Um, so IgE is an antibody. When we are um, infected with a bacteria or a virus, we make uh, an antibody to fight that type of infection. And we think that IgE antibodies actually originated to fight parasitic infections. And for reasons that we don't understand, IgE is also the antibody that, for some reason, attacks peanut allergen or attacks cat allergen if we have cat allergy. And in these types of, uh, this type of allergy, you're actually at risk for anaphylaxis, which is a severe life-threatening reaction. And the symptoms can range from uh, lip tingling, swelling in your mouth, throat tightening, um, chest tightness, shortness of breath. It can involve all organ systems. You can drop your blood pressure, you can develop wheezing, and um, severe shortness of breath. So it can be severely life-threatening and needs to be taken very seriously. The most important factor in t whether or not someone will have a severe allergic reaction or not is the dose of the allergen that was ingested. So The types of testing that we have are the uh, skin prick testing for food allergy, where we actually put the allergen extracts on the skin and uh, pierce the skin with them. And we wait to see if uh, an allergic uh, reaction develops locally in the skin. And that gives us sort of a yes or no uh, question, uh, answer about um, uh, if, the pre if the IgE is present in the body. Uh, we also use a blood test to give us a level of uh, antibody present. And for, for some foods, that level is really important because uh, studies have been done that show um, certain levels, for example, in peanut allergy, are more likely predictive of true food allergy uh, versus just uh, sort of an asymptomatic having a positive blood test, which can really help sort out whether or not you have true food allergy or not. The biggest breakthrough in the last few years has been this idea of oral immunotherapy for food allergy. And there have been small studies that have shown uh, pretty well that you can induce uh, a state of desensitization to a food that you are allergic to. And these studies have so far really focused on the top food allergens, which are peanut, milk, and egg. And um, this involves ingesting a very small amount of the allergenic food, milk, peanut, or egg, and building up a tolerance over time, over a year or two years or even longer. It has allowed people to build up to, um, to an ingestion of uh, this food um, on, on about a daily basis. But when they stop the food, there's still a good chance that they will uh, there's a good chance that they will redevelop allergic symptoms once they stop. So it's, the problem is it's not yet a permanent state of tolerance, and that's what we're working on. So there's uh, this idea of the hygiene hypothesis really started back in the 1980s, where it was observed that um, children who came from families with lots of children in them 
um, were protected against the development of allergy, whereas children who didn't have any siblings were much more likely to d develop allergy. And here they were looking at hay fever symptoms. And the idea back then was really that if you're exposed to your siblings, they're bringing home lots of infections. And it was thought that developing different infections promoted a healthy immune system and this protected us from getting allergies. So over the last couple of decades, this has sort of changed to recognize that, you know, maybe it's not just infection, but um, it is also the and, um, bacteria and other organisms that live inside of us that is sort of collectively called the human microbiome and that these organisms are important for developing a health, healthy immune system. And so the hygiene hypothesis now has been sort of revised to suggest that these organisms are important and not having a healthy microbiome is a risk factor for the development of allergy, both um, asthma, hay fever, and food allergies. So a couple of years ago, we showed that children who are likely to be food allergic um, have very high levels of antimicrobial chemicals in their urine. So the question really is, do antimicrobial chemicals that we're exposed to through products that we use every day or through our foods influence the development of allergy, including food allergy? And one of the ways we'll look at this is in an observational a cohort of women uh, who are pregnant and will follow their children through age three to look at the development of allergy in relationship to exposure to these chemicals. Um, we'll also be able to look at the microbiome of these children and their mothers to see if, uh, to see exactly how these chemicals affect the microbiome and the development of allergy.